is so rely reliable. <laughs> Hey fellow fiction fanatics, I'm Chase. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my April wrap up. So in April I was actually able to read six books, which is astounding to me because I did not feel like I was reading as much as I was wanting to, and yet somehow I was able to read six books. I, I don't know how I did it. So here are the six books that I was able to read in April. So the first book I was able to read was The Vanishing Stare by Maureen Johnson. This is the second book in the Truly Devious trilogy. We get to see Stevie again. She's back at Ellingham Academy. We get to see her as she's exploring more about the school, just diving deeper into the mystery of everything going on. I just love seeing Stevie back in her element. I felt like Watson watching Sherlock put the puzzle pieces together. I love this so much. I love the characters. I love the drama, the suspense. I think one of my favorite characters has to be Nate. I think his sense of humor is hilarious. I love that Janelle and Stevie have to like get him out of his comfort zone and I love that they just like draw him out of his shell. I think he's so great and I love their friendship and I love the story. I love the new characters we see in this book. I definitely ship Hunter and Stevie. I can't stand David. He is the worst. I don't like him in the first book. I don't like him in this book. I like him less in this book. We get to know a little more about David in this one. And do I feel bad for him? Yes. Do I like him? No. That's just how I feel about David and I don't want to talk about him anymore. But this book was so good. I need the third one now. I would have it now if the libraries weren't closed. I just want to read the third book in this trilogy and see how everything wraps up because I'm so excited. I just want to read more and more of this series. I gave this book five stars and by reading it I completed my challenge to read my most anticipated book. The next book I was able to get to was Leviathan by Scott Westerfield. This book was... it was okay. I definitely thought it had an interesting concept which is why I picked it up. It's this alternate history steampunk version of World War One. I. I really thought that was intriguing but I think it relied far too heavily on the exposition and the explanation of machinery to really catch my interest further. But I'm sure someone out there is gonna love that. So overall, it wasn't great, it wasn't terrible, so I gave it three stars. And it completed my challenge to read a book that I had a low expectation for. But then I was able to pick up a book that I absolutely love, which is called Little Moments of Love, which is a Katana Comics collection by Katana Cheatwin. This book is just so good. Like you pick it up and I guarantee you will smile. This book is hilarious. It's relatable. It's lovable. It's the cutest little thing. It just reminds me so much of my husband and I. I just love it so much. It's so funny. Essentially, it's just about being in love with your favorite weirdo. So <laughs> I loved it and I think you will too. So I gave this five stars and I'm so glad I picked it up again because it's so good and I definitely, definitely recommend you read this. I was then able to read Numbers Raging by Rebecca Rhodes. This is the third and final book in the Numbers Game trilogy. I was surprised that I liked the first two as much as I did, but the third one sort of just kind of let me down. I thought it was really cool that in this book we got to see the world outside of Nora and what's going on with all the other countries. I didn't really think about that in the past two books and I was intrigued to find out more about what was going on. I liked this book for the most part. It wasn't bad at all, but my main issue with this was that the ending felt really rushed. There was this big battle that happened and I don't remember a thing that happened in it. I remember someone died and that's about all I remember. So I don't think that's a good thing. And then the way that it ended, it just left me going, Really? That's it? That's how we're ending the book? Really? So, didn't love that. So overall, I gave this book and the series in general four stars, and it fulfilled my challenge to read a book in a series. I then was able to read Never Forever by L.R. Johnson. This is the story of Brianna. She moves from the United States to England to attend Cambridge University. There she meets Callum. Brianna is going through a lot right now. She has had a tragic past and she has secrets 
and Callum has secrets of his own. When fate unwillingly brings them together, they have to figure out if they can overcome their stubbornness and pride in order to be together and see if they can make it through. This is a really intriguing and great read. I really enjoyed this. I thought this book had great plot and great characters. It definitely had surprising moments. I really enjoyed it a lot. I will warn you that there is a lack of communication trope that I don't like, but I can see how it was somewhat essential to the plot, even though I wish it didn't have to be. Brianna isn't the most likable character. She was really frustrating to me, but I think that Callum and my favorite character, Olivia, is so good. She's just so spunky and she has this spitfire attitude and I absolutely love her. Like, I could read this book just for Olivia alone. She is so good. I love her attitude and her character and I love her so much. Olivia alone makes up for Brianna being an unlikable character. I would definitely pick up this book if you're looking for a book with heart, humor, and just the right amount of sex appeal. I gave this book five stars and I was able to use it to complete my challenge to read a book that I own. And then I was finally able to read A Heart So Fierce and Broken by Bridget Kemmerer. So this is the second book in the Curse Breaker trilogy. The first one is A Curse So Dark and Lonely and that one is A Beauty and the Beast retelling. And this is like the continuation of what happened after the curse was broken. I didn't love this book at first. I didn't really like the new dual perspectives we got. The first one, we get dual perspectives from Harper and Ren. And in this one, we get it from Grey and Liamara. I didn't really love these two. I just sort of missed Harper and Ren. And I really wish this book had actually all four perspectives so we could see what was going on with Harper and Ren and then what was going on with Liamara and Grey. I actually really would have loved if in uh, Curse So Dark and Lonely, we'd gotten Grey's perspective as well. And then in this book, we could have added Liamara's perspective and it would have had a much better transition, I think. So that sort of threw me off in the beginning. I wasn't really sure how I felt about these new characters, but as I started reading more, I started liking these characters more and more. And I liked the relationships that came about. I really love Tycho. He was a great new character. He's like Grey's little adorable brother that I just absolutely fell in love with. I loved his loyalty, I loved his heart. He is so cute, he's adorable, and I think he would hate me saying that about him, but I can't help it because I would just loved him so much. They just had this brotherly vibe together and I thought it was so sweet and it just made me so happy. So at first, I wasn't really into the romance that was going on. I don't know what happened though because suddenly I flipped a switch and I am on board with the ship and I'm very happy with where this is going. And boy does Bridget Cameron know how to do her endings. She leaves us with like this great little wrap up and you're like, okay, I don't need the next one, but I'm excited for it. And then she gives you that epilogue and it's like, excuse me, what? I need the next book now. I was pleasantly surprised with this book. I cannot wait for the next one. So I gave this book five stars and this book completed my challenge to read a book that's a retelling. All right, so those are all the books that I was able to read in April. I'd love to know what books you were able to read in April and if you've read any of these and what you think about them. Let me know if you're as excited as I am to read The Hand on the Wall and A Vow So Bold and Deadly. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to share the love. I'll see you next time. Bye.